Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, members of the graduating class, faculty, family, and friends. It is said that great leaders are successful because of their passion, clear vision, continuous hard work, and determination. If there is a person who truly embodies all of these traits, it is Mr. Stephen Polos. Mr. Polos not only loves what he does, but he does it with a great deal of commitment and passion. Mr. Stephen Polos is the current governor of the Bank of Canada. As governor, he's also chairman of the board of directors of the bank and a member of the board of directors of the Bank for International Settlements. Mr. Polos was born in Oshawa, Ontario, and he joined Queen's University in the mid-1970s as a pre-med student, but found economics more interesting. Following his passion and interest, he graduated from Queen's University in 1978 with a bachelor's degree in economics. He started working in Ottawa at the Bank of Canada, first as a summer student in 1978, and eventually in the governor's office 35 years later. That path included numerous achievements, including earning a master's degree in 1979 and PhD in economics in 1982, both from the University of Western Ontario. Following his studies, Mr. Polos has had an illustrious career in the financial sector, first at the Bank of Canada as chief of the bank's research department, then at Montreal-based BCA Research as managing editor of its flagship publication, The International Bank Credit Analyst, and then at Export Development Canada in 1999 as chief economist. In 2011, he was appointed as president and chief executive officer of Export Development Canada, and then subsequently he returned to the Bank of Canada in 2013 as its ninth governor. Mr. Polos is a certified international trade professional and a graduate of Columbia University Senior Executive Program. He's a former president of the Ottawa Economics Association and is a current member of the Lawrence Center Advisory Council. He also serves as chair of the nominating committee for the Community Foundations of Ottawa. Besides his experiences and expertise in the public and private sectors, he continues to give back to the community as an educator to inform young generation about monetary policy and central banking. In Canada, he taught economics at the University of Western Ontario, Concordia University, and the Queen's Schools of Business. In March 2017, he returned to his hometown, Oshawa, and delivered a speech on Canadian economic history at Durham College, which was hosted in partnership with UOIT and Trent University, Durham. He has a great vision for our country's economy and truly believes that free trade, foreign investment, and immigration are cornerstone of the Canadian economy. Mr. Polos is truly a role model and an inspiration to young Canadians and more importantly to our graduates at Trent University who are about to embark on their professional journey. Mr. Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to present for the degree Doctor of Laws, Honoré Cosse, Mr. Stephen Polos. Congratulations, Dr. Poloz. It's now my pleasure and honor to invite you to speak to Convocation. Well, thank you so much for that. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, members of the graduating class of Trent University, Durham, faculty, family, and friends. Well, I'm truly happy to share your special day with you. I remember my own graduation days as if they were yesterday. Well, my sincere congratulations to you and to your families too, as I know that this day is also very important for them. 
I want to thank Trent University for bestowing on me the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. It truly is an honor, something to treasure. So let me express my gratitude by sharing three life messages with you. And I should emphasize that these messages are from someone who, like many of you, grew up in this area. Now, Oshawa is a very different place today than it was when I was growing up. Today, the city is much larger, and the employment pattern is quite different. The call of the factory was much stronger when I was in school, especially GM and the auto parts sector, which is where my father worked. Hardly anyone from my graduating class went to university. But one thing that has remained the same over the years is that a university education is the key to unlocking career path choices. As a young student, I knew I needed that key. But nobody in my family before me had gone to university, and my parents certainly didn't have the money. So here's my first life message for you. And this is the most important lesson that my parents taught me. The primary importance of hard work. You'll all face obstacles at some point, and probably already have. But I've learned that there are very few obstacles that you can't overcome with hard work. My parents encouraged me to work hard enough to get around the roadblock that might have kept me from going to university. I needed to work hard, not just in school, but also to earn the money to get myself to school. Now at one point, I had three jobs. Some days it feels like I still have three jobs. But I had three jobs when I was young. I was working at my uncle's swimming pool business. I worked in the music department at Eaton's in the Oshawa Center, just over on Stevenson Road. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I had my own disc jockey business. That occupied my Saturday nights. Ultimately, I was able to attend Queen's University because of that hard work. And also because I was lucky enough to marry my high school sweetheart, Valerie, during my second year at school. Valerie's here with us today. And I'll always be, <clears throat> I'll always be great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'll always be grateful for her, for her hard work, which put food on the table so I could get that key, a university education. Now, all of you now have that key. And as you progress in life and pursue your careers, you'll encounter many more obstacles, events that are beyond your control. But what you can control is the amount of effort that you make. If you add the willingness to work hard to the power of your education, you'll find success. Now, my second life message to you is about your choice of career. The high quality education that you leave here with today gives you options. And I'm encouraging you to give some thought to the many possibilities that working in the public service offers. Now, it may surprise you to learn that a quarter of the Canadian workforce is employed in public service, doing some of the most rewarding and fulfilling work out there. Now, even if you don't choose a public service career, please consider choosing to spend some time there. Personally, I have the privilege of leading an organization of some 1,500 hardworking professionals, all of whom are committed to a better Canada. Imagine if it was your job to find innovative ways to facilitate strong economic growth and job creation, or to design and produce the best, most reliable money in the world. Well, work like that is not just cool. It's very meaningful. And the coolest part? Well, I get to have my signature on the money. Uh, there's not too much cooler than that, right? Certainly for an economist. <laughs> now, it's very cool in the private sector, too. I've spent some time there as well. The opportunity to create new goods or new services, new jobs, build a business of the future is tremendously exciting. So, if you can gain experience and understanding in both the private sector and the public sector, all the better. Now, when I travel, I often have to fill out a form where I'm asked to state my occupation. And I'm always proud to write, 
public servant. And my third life message to you is about learning. Today should not and must not be the end of your learning. Now the education you've received will serve you well in your future careers, but it's been more about learning how to learn than about collecting facts. If you have a job waiting for you in your field tomorrow, well, you can't predict the kinds of employment that will be out there in the future. In fact, your perfect job might not even exist yet. And that makes it important to always be learning new skills, to develop new tools for your toolkit, so to speak. So let me give you an example of what I mean. I can remember way back in the early 1980s, and I know many of you have trouble imagining that. In the early 1980s at the Bank of Canada, drafting a research paper on the one and only personal computer in our department. Now, I got a fair bit of grief for that as people walked by me. You see, the PC was out in the hallway for everyone to share, some 45 people. Now, people were wondering why I would waste my time writing on a PC when we had an entire secretarial pool that could do the typing for me. Well, the way I saw it back then, my finished product was better and it was produced more efficiently because the PC allowed me to think and revise while I typed. And more importantly, I also got to learn how to use a new tool, which turned out to be a paradigm shift, as we all know now. The really good news is that I took a typing course in high school back in the early 70s, so it was easy. So think of learning not as the number of facts that you've picked up in the classroom, but as the number of tools that you've accumulated to this point in your life. And your opportunities will multiply. Technologies are emerging and evolving faster than ever. That old PC is a museum piece now. So you should make it a habit to always be looking for new tools that you can pick up. Personally, I always have a couple of books, books on the go. Mostly I read novels, to be honest, as a kind of break. But I'm also always reading something formative. Having a learning mindset will portray yourself as someone with a wider array of skills, someone who can adapt to change, can deploy new tools to create more lift, more lift for your organization. So those are my three life messages for you today. First, overcome obstacles with hard work. Second, remember that public service is still a noble calling. And third, never stop accumulating new skills. Class of 2017, I wish you all the best of luck and every success. And I look forward to hearing great things about you in the future. Thank you so much.